In my opinion, in the snowmobile world today, when it comes to choosing your sled, there's just too many choices out there. I mean, you got all the categories that range from mountain to crossover to trail to utility to youth to two up to touring. I mean, that goes on and on. And then you've got all the sub decisions you got to make when it comes to engine choice or the type and length of track you're going to put on the machine or the suspension you want on your machine or the tech that you're going to option or the colors of your machine, even your riding position and ski stance and, you know, what type of specific terrain that sled is designed to ride in. I mean, the choices and combinations just go on and on forever. So I'm going to evaluate myself and try to figure out what kind of rider I am now. And in that process, maybe you can take some of my strategy and use it to evaluate what kind of rider you are when looking for a sled new or used. My background is obviously more focused on flatland stuff, but I think thinking critically about your sled choice is the same no matter what category of sled you ride. Out in the wild, I've seen a lot of riders out there struggle with their choice of snowmobile. On the trail, I've seen folks choose sleds way too spicy for their skill level, or have chosen sleds with too much engine or too much suspension. It's the same in the mountains with folks choosing sleds more capable than they are and getting themselves into trouble or struggling to ride something that looks cool with a mile of track out the back while trying to ride in six inches of snow all day. Of course, you do you boo boo. I'm not gonna tell you or anybody else what they should be buying or what they should be riding, but the better choice you make when it comes to selecting the snowmobile you are gonna ride, the more enjoyment you're gonna get out of a snowmobile season that's, let's face it, getting shorter and shorter all the time. To begin to narrow my riding style down, I'm not a two-up rider and I'm not a mountain goat either, but I am looking for decent power on the sleds that I ride. I also like fiddling with suspensions. I live in an area with lots of tight, twisty trails, but I also like riding big systems. So I think I've come to the conclusion I'm a performance trail guy. At this point in my life, I've had the chance to ride all kinds of different sleds and I've been through all the fads and phases a typical rider does. Now, I just wanna focus on the enjoyment of sledding. Let's start. I've already said I'm a trail slash performance guy. Next thing to figure out is whether or not I'm a two stroke or a four stroke rider. And without going too far down that rabbit hole, I'm a two stroke guy. I like the sound, I like the smell, I like how the power hits, I just like them. And I also accept their shortcomings like longevity and the extra cost of oil consumption. So two strokes are in and that starts to narrow the field down, even cuts down on what manufacturers to focus on. Now I pretty much fall in love with any sled I'm holding handlebars on, but like you would have to do, I want to narrow the field down to one manufacturer, so I'm choosing Polaris. Now all companies are building great stuff, but I do want to put myself in the regular consumer shoes where most likely you only have one sled to ride and not a whole fleet of press vehicles from all manufacturers. Plus, I like Polaris and I've been a fan of these machines ever since I was a kid when I was riding my 650 up there. At this point in my evaluation, I've determined I'm a trail two-stroke Polaris guy, and it's now the choices get interesting. And that's because in the Polaris lineup, they have three categories that I think I'm interested in. Pure performance, luxury with a good dose of performance, and crossover performance. But I can only choose one. And let's start with pure performance. And I feel the sled that best describes this category out of the whole Polaris lineup is the late model XCR. The XCR stands for Cross Country Racer and has been developed through Polaris' experience in cross country racing events like the I-500 and other races popular in the Midwest, Polaris' own backyard. Now, what I like about this sled is that it hasn't been designed as a snowcross sled and then detuned for the trail. The XCR does this in the same matrix chassis as other sleds in the Polaris lineup, but the XCR has been fitted with an excellent set of two inch Walker Evans Velocity racing shocks in each position on the suspension. Now these shocks are tunable with preload adjustment and both high and low speed compression knobs. Rebound though is fixed from the factory because this shock has an internal needle on the shock shaft that ramps up compression to prevent bottoming out. Because of this, rebound adjustment can't be run through the center of the shock rod like on other setups. The XCR also has some other trickery on board with optimized geometry of the front arm of the rear suspension for better performance in the chatter an improved brake cooling system to avoid brake fade when speeds need to be scrubbed off time after time coming into the corners or whoop sections, and also critical components have been beefed up to take a beating.
The next category is crossover, and the option here is the Polaris Switchback Assault, or the plain old switchbacks are options too, but I like the higher end suspension on the Assault package that includes WER, Walker Evans Racing Shocks, in all positions. Two inch velocities are found up front, then two inch CAs in the middle, and regular old velocities out back. This is a very tunable package that can be optimized for more off-trail or on-trail conditions depending on where you're riding. But like all crossovers, there's a compromise to be made. To be effective, the Assault has to ride the line between on and off-trail performance, and because of this, it can't be optimized for either. Most obvious is the track that's a little too long for the trail and not long enough for really steep and deep snow you can find off-trail. Beyond the track, there are three engine choices here as well, which I will address later, but what is included here is the industry-leading 7S display, which I want to address now. This display is available on all the models I'm interested in and is something that I would want on any sled that I ride. Now this is something that has definitely changed for me in the last couple of years. At first, I thought these systems were a bit of a gimmick, but the more time I spend with this type of feature on my sled, the more I miss it when it's not there. The last category for me is luxury performance, best personified in the Polaris lineup by the VR1 Boost. The VR1 option is available with 650 and 850 NA engines, but I'm gonna go with the Boost, which I think makes this the ultimate GT Class performance sled. Built on the now familiar Matrix chassis, the VR1 is just one small step down in suspension class from the XCR with its Walker Evans racing shocks in all positions, but everything else about it elevates the experience for the trail rider. On the trail, the VR1 with any engine under the hood or track is an excellent place to be. Polaris has refined this sled to deliver on the high expectations of serious trail riders, yet hasn't overdone it. These are three pretty amazing platforms that are somewhat similar but also very different. And after going through the details of each, I think I've made my decision and the sled that I choose is the XCR, but that's not the end of my decision-making process. Now that I've got my platform nailed down, the next choice on my list is the type of track, which is something you may or may not have a choice of when it comes to buying your sled, either new or used. But tracks can be changed, so even if the perfect sled for you doesn't have the perfect track option, that's a problem that can be solved. Now the next option is one of the most important, the engine. This is something I actually struggled quite a bit with. Now, Choosing an XCR platform, the boost isn't on the menu, but that leaves me with engine choices of either a 650 or 850. Engine choice can have a huge impact on costs for fuel consumption and insurance costs. And if I was staying more local to my home where the trail system is a little tighter, I would definitely go with the 650 for some cost savings. But I like to travel to some of the bigger systems, to places like New Brunswick, where a little more power can be put to use. So, at the end of the day, surprise, surprise, I'm an 850 guy. That's because in my world, there is just no replacement for displacement. There's a lot that goes into choosing the perfect sled. And for me, that's the 850 XCR with a 7S display. This is the sled that checks all the boxes on my needs and wants list. It has the power I want, the suspension I want, the tech I want, and it fits my riding personality and expectations. And I'm sure this sled will deliver on all of it, at least for now. Maybe in another 10 years or so, I'll be looking for a sled with the most comfortable backrest. But if I choose correctly at that time, I'll still be enjoying the ride. And I hope you will be too.